This video is inspired by one of your comments suggesting to beat Plants vs Zombies 2 using only Plants vs Zombies 2 plants. This is a very interesting idea since it's the exact opposite of what the original Alex did of trying to beat Plants vs Zombies 2 using only Plants vs Zombies 1 plants. I think the challenge is very clear, we cannot use any plant that is in PvZ1. So no sunflower, no cherry bomb, no winterman and nothing like that. We'll also be playing every level from ancient Egypt all the way to Dark Ages part 1. So yeah, let's start. So the first plant we can use is Bloomerang, but of course we don't unlock it until the third level. However, we are given infinite lawnmowers, which is good. I think. Actually, I don't think, but uh, whatever. Uh, uh, next, next level. Okay, so I'm not gonna waste time on unnecessary stuff or uh, whatever. Uh, all I need you to know is that this world was easy. I mean, like, what did you expect? This is ancient Egypt. I mean, there was only like one slightly challenging level, kind of. Which is level 20 because you must not pick any sunflowers, but uh, sunflowers? Because you cannot pick any sun from the sunflowers, but other than that, this world was very easy. So instead of discussing how ancient Egypt is possible with just Lumarang, Iceberg Lettuce, and Bong Choi, let's just immediately go to Pirate Seas. So unsurprisingly, the start of Pirate Seas is very easy. That's of course until day 8, which is a ridiculously hard level. The only plant we can use is Snapdragon, and the level is two flags long. Add this to the fact that we can only have six Snapdragons on the lawn at once. The biggest problem in this level is the Seagull Zombie. Since Seagulls on the outer lanes won't take as much damage, they are easily able to eat the Snapdragon and get to the house. I discovered something that I didn't know up until now even after playing so much of Plants vs Zombies 2. That is, if you give plant food to a plant, its health resets. Normally this doesn't make any difference. But as long as the Snapdragon has full health, it will be able to stop the Seagull Zombie on time. However, I will just show you the winning attempt. Okay, actually, uh, enough for that nonsense. It's not like that was so close anyway. Day 13 was immediately impossible because it was the produce X amount of sun level. And obviously, we don't have access to any sun producers. This is why I'm not allowing myself to replay any levels. Since this will just be primal sunflower magnifying grass for every level and there is no challenge at all. Day 18 is a locked and loaded level and... Wait, we can only use spring beam. Wow. Well, let's see if Spring Bean can beat the whole level by itself. I cannot believe that worked. And finally, Zombos is a very epic battle as we are only allowed to use Coconut Cannon and Snapdragon. After some attempts I beat the level, it's really not super duper hard. Okay, let's start with the Wild West and... Yeah, but for now, planting a Coconut Cannon on the minecart works just fine. And of course, use Snapdragons to clear out all zombies in the final wave. Then it became just some lightning read spam. This world was surprisingly easy for the most part. And of course, even day 23 which Koala said is impossible to beat with one seed slot, I beat it using only lightning read. That's of course until we get to zone boss which I think is impossible. Because peepots don't do damage or something, it's just we don't, cannot output enough damage with just peepots and lightning read. So this level technically might be possible, but I don't know, let's just go to Frostbite Caves. Day 3 of Frostbite Caves is possible with just her kill. Like if you try this level so many times, you will eventually get lucky and beat it. I just know for a fact that it's possible. Day 5 is pretty challenging. Although I beat it first try, so it's not very challenging. Wait, that does not make any sense. Uh, next, next level. So, day 10 is... <laughs> day 12 is the last stand level and... 
Spring is the best plan the game. And apart from a technically possible level that I will call impossible, I mostly breeze through this world. There were some slightly challenging levels, but I beat them all first try. There really isn't much to say about this world, except for day 30, which is of course... Uh, yeah. We can use every plant here, except 3 pieces. However, without 3 pieces, we don't do nearly enough damage to take out Zombos. And it was only after so many attempts that I realized that I couldn't get past the first phase. So this level technically might be possible, but look at the difference 3 pieces makes. So now let's move on to Lost City. So this world gives us three very useful plants that will be key for this challenge. The first one is Red Stinger since it's a repeater that costs less with a weakness that's completely irrelevant for this challenge. Oh and by the way did I mention that day 13 is hard? The only two plants we can use are Red Stinger and AKE also known as the Otomonos Catapulting Egyptomatic Emitter. So we need to get lucky enough to get them consist, con, consist, consistent, consistently enough in the conveyor belt. But wait, we have a little conversation. So Potato Chess, what is your strategy for beating Lost City Day 13? Win. But actually I think the level is impossible. Unless you get like absolute perfect luck, I, like, I, I couldn't beat the level. And of course, the gold tiles make these levels much easier, as we're given an insane amount of additional sun. Day 20 is a bit challenging, but everything is manageable. Wait, Snapdragon's plant food doesn't even one-shot bug zombies? I uh, guess. The other key plant is Stalia, a zero sun cost bitter iceberg lettuce, that actually sees a ton of usage in the later world. The other plant is gold leaf and we finally have a sun producer. This plant will be very helpful for obvious reasons. And just like that we are done with Lost City and let's immediately go to Far Future. Okay this world was actually very easy because for some reason you can beat every level with just Red Stinger. To the point that I would say that this world was even easier than Wild West. Wait what? Okay there you go. Day 17 only allows us to use magnifying grass with no sun producers. But for some reason it's still possible. How on earth am I supposed to produce 6000 sun? Oh. Also there has to be some sort of impossible level because Starfoot is somehow a plant in Plants vs Zombies 1. Yeah there's just nothing to this world, let's go to Dark Ages. Bruh. Okay, so just to be clear, nights 1, 2, and 3 are all impossible, because we cannot produce any sun. Night 4 is also impossible because of this. <laughs> Night 5 is also impossible because we cannot produce any sun. Day 6 is possible because it's the last sand level. We have unlocked sunbeam, which means we finally have a way to make some sun. And even though it sounds completely stupid, we are able to clear the whole level just because we have sunbeam. And we have reached the final level of the video, which is, we cannot use any plants, okay, okay, no, 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 one more level, one more level, okay. Night 11 is actually hard. Or actually it's not so hard, it's similar to day 8. That's it for the video, hope you enjoyed, and uh, yeah, part 2 is coming soon.